Good morning. Uh, so I joined the RCT. Uh, RCT is a uh, institution uh, group very similar to MGI, but we are just uh, annotating uh, uh, RATA-related uh, uh, gene annotations. Oops. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So my presentation uh, includes two parts. First, I will include, uh, introduce uh, Andopub. And uh, the second part is uh, uh, how Andopub is integrated into the uh, RGD curation process right now. So the uh, Andopub is a, a sub-project of PhenoMinor. PhenoMinor is a project at RGD. And, uh, we host uh, a lot of uh, uh, phenotype data, and those phenotype data were curated uh, at RGD and uh, by uh, curators, and we use uh, four ontologies uh, to organize this uh, uh, phenotype data. The ontologies were develop, uh, are developed at RGD, uh, so we have red string, uh, clinical measurement, and the measurement method, and experiment condition to uh, use ontology to search uh, what is being measured and how they are measured. So RC needs a system to tag ontology terms uh, and customize tax uh, patterns so that we can uh, get a stati statistics about uh, what uh, um, terms have been used in uh, PubMed articles. And uh, if there is any potential terms we can include in the ontologies. And also, we hope this system can be used to assist uh, the curation works at RGD and also serve as a data source for uh, data mining. So there are several challenges uh, for this project. Uh, as you know, uh, I, as, uh, I joined RGD as a programmer, actually. Uh, my background uh, has nothing to do with uh, curation or even biology. So I've, my focus is to a system that can um, process text in a very efficient way. And I searched uh, uh, se uh, existing systems. It seems many in the bio uh, LP group uh, community, people are focusing on building models and uh, algorithms to uh, get information out of text, but there is no uh, efficient way to process text in a very large scale. So, but in, in this project, we need to take uh, terms that uh, from ontologies that the ontologies are uh, constantly changing because we add new terms and drop old terms, and uh, we may need to include new ontologies into the uh, into this system. So of, and also article changes from time to time in um, PubMed, and we also like to use uh, like R for data analysis to use the data in this uh, uh, system. So how to keep the annotations up to date is a big challenge for us. And uh, currently, PubMed has 23 million articles already. Uh, to tag all the terms will take a long time uh, without using any uh, industry level data processing software. And also, very, we have very limited resources at RGD. And uh, currently, I'm the only one working on this. Uh, there are several uh, public available uh, software systems that we can we might use. So first is the PubMed search engine. Uh, in this project, obviously we cannot use them because use it because uh, uh, the ontology changes. We cannot uh, just uh, feed in all the terms into PubMed search engine and uh, get the articles. And also, our PubMed doesn't provide the the mention the exact position of the term mentionings in the original text. So we also tried to use uh, NCBO's annotator, but NCBO's annotator is, has a, uh, you can only use it in two ways. One is to use the web service, or you can uh, download the, uh, the virtual machine to install it. But it's not, so it's not very uh, uh, scalable. And MedMap is, uh, to annotate 
Uh, disease term is very good, but it's very slow. So, and we also investigated if GoPubMed, Puptator, and Textpresso can be used, but they are not very customizable. So the goal of the system, first is uh, performance. We want to uh, process all PubMed articles using uh, with the uh, ontologies very efficiently. So, and second, scalable. So if we can scale the whole system very easily, and uh, maybe potentially using uh, Amazon Web Service, then we can add a lot of new ont uh, other ontologies into this system. And they're robust, so single node failure shouldn't uh, bring the whole system down. And we don't expect any uh, data loss for just because of single node failure. Expandable, uh, so we want to, so maybe it, this is very related to open source. We want to use existing free software very, uh, as much as possible. I hate to write codes if we, there is always functionality is already there. So, and uh, we can, we hope to use, oops, current uh, bio-NLP community software without much effort. So there are the, uh, several key uh, technologies we used in this uh, system. First is uh, Hadoop HDFS and the MapReduce. So my background is uh, uh, computation related. So I also tried to use a SunGrid, the grid uh, uh, engine to process the text, but the, the limit is the IO. So, and uh, since uh, many industry search engines are already using Hadoop and uh, it's very efficient in this case. It's very scalable. And to program, use the prim programming framework is very flexible. So second is uh, uh, Apache HBase. Apache HBase is uh, uh, not, it's not a regional database, but it's very use, very efficient and it has a very good integra integration with the MapReduce. So all the, uh, it has minimal a network I.O. if you integrate them two together. Uh, so to use the uh, BioNLP software from the community, we use the gate and the UEMA framework. So all those components are compatible to these uh, two frameworks. So for using the, th uh, third th uh, the first three software, we can already achieve what we, we have been uh, pro uh, decided to do, but uh, as, as a side pro uh, product, we stored all the uh, PubMed articles and uh, annotations into Apache Solar so that uh, we can retrieve the information very easily. <coughs> um, um, programming languages, we mostly use Java, JavaScript, and Velocity. This is the system structure of this current system. So uh, we have pipeline running to retrieve, oh, it's kind of small, uh, PubMed pub articles from NCBI uh, daily. So after the data is retrieved, we put them on to, uh, the data is in XML format. So we put the data into uh, Hadoop HDFS, then load the, articles into uh, Apache HBase. Since this is very distributed and uh, the loading process is very efficient. Then we use, uh, we are making use of uh, the NCBI's uh, uh, parser to pass the other XML files. The parser information will be fed into an ex uh, information extraction uh, engine. So this we use the gate and the UEMA and the MATMAP. This is a, uh, so as you can see, uh, this is a fully uh, parallelized. So each, uh, each node will only process the data stored locally. The annotation will be sent back to the HBase. So not like uh, the traditional uh, uh, relational database, you have a, a, a one table for article, one table for all the annotations, but using HBase, you store uh, 
all annotations related to one article in one row, in one record. Then in the indexing process, this is also uh, distributed. So the indexer will read information from the uh, HBase, but at this stage, the article, the XML files will be parsed again. So this is a little bit overhead, but uh, as our experience, it seems it won't, the overhead is very minimal if, because the parser is, uh, runs very fast. So this part is, uh, the user interface is uh, based on solar. So this, uh, we write, uh, created some um, velocity uh, programs to parse the, to present, to render the uh, search result from, the, from solar. So the query expansion is uh, we use, make use of the ontologies and the ontology term relationship is stored in, uh, stored in the RGD main database. So given the concept, we're gonna uh, use all the subterms, the, all the descendants as well as the given term. And for genes, we use uh, synonyms and uh, uh, not, not synonym, but aliases, and as well as the uh, name and a symbol. Uh, the PubMed uh, pub, uh, pipeline, we run every, every night, and it's uh, incremental. So we only retrieve the articles that have been imported uh, or modified uh, on the same day. So we use uh, the e-search, e-utilities, e-search, and e-fetch which supports SOAP, so we don't actually need to do much programming for this. To store the uh, article, it's, uh, we, we have a small cluster, but before this, pro when this project started, we, we only have one server, and uh, recently we found that uh, RG has a small grid server, uh, grid cluster that have been never used. We have eight servers in this cluster. We use one as a master for Hadoop and the same as slaves. So as you can see, the configuration is very low. It's uh, not as fast as most of our laptops right now. Uh, at the beginning, because uh, we started, we, we tried to use MySQL. MySQL database um, <coughs> is a relational, so everything is normalized. There is, is a much overhead, but it's not distributed. So if you, we use Hadoop uh, MapReduce framework, the bottleneck is all in MySQL. The loading, because it's used indexing, so loading is very, very slow. Usually we, uh, to load all 23 million articles will take weeks. You know. Especially when we are annotate, uh, the annotations are inserted because uh, annotations, we have 23 million articles and 20, Annotations is in sometimes in billions. So to insert an annotation and delete an, an annotation, the index will be rebuilt. So it's very inefficient. We also tried CouchDB. CouchDB is a document database. It's a, it's, it's not uh, normalized, and it's very easy to use. And it's, uh, the loading is fast because there is no indexing. Uh, it supports version control, but the problem is uh, it's also not distributed. So when you run several uh, four, over 40 process at the same time, this is not good enough. Finally, we settled on um, HBase. So HBase is very fast for MapReduce because a lot of the uh, I.O. process is only reading from the local disk. There isn't much network uh, data transfers. It also supports version control, so we can load old data or new data without uh, uh, cons consider, without uh, trying to verify which one is uh, old or which one is new. It's the new, oh, the newer one will always be stored. So generating uh, annotations, uh, we use mostly we use a gate. Gate, uh, one, is because, one reason is because uh, Gate is, uh, has a uh, very good user interface, so we can just uh, drag and drop uh, 
gate plugins to construct pipelines and test them easily. Uh, Gene Tiger, we used Abner. We hope we can make use of um, a lot of uh, uh, the algorithms models built in in the BioCreative project, but uh, there aren't many available that you can use very easily. So, and uh, if you can, uh, if those are programs can be uh, wrapped in in UEMO or Gate, we would love to try them. So organism, we also tag organisms using the organism tagger uh, mutations. We use the mutation finder and the simple regular expression annotator. Stemming, uh, for to annotate the terms, we use the uh, stammer. So snowball is used in this case. Ontology term tagger is just a uh, dictionary based. This is very similar to uh, NCBO is annotator, where uh, annotator use uh, mgrep. It, uh, for, for a given word in a dictionary, mgrep try to uh, uh, extend the, the term forms in several ways. But we use the, we hope to, by using stemming, we can do this, uh, have the same functions. Uh, POS tagger, we use the, any uh, POS tagger. This is a very, uh, a very shallow tagger, but it's very fast. Uh, recently, Gate has uh, introduced a new uh, feature. So you can, because if you want to uh, de deploy your code, your uh, Java code into Ma MapReduce, you need to include other dependencies. And uh, for a Gate installation, usually, a lot of dependencies uh, is hard to find. They are in di different uh, uh, dictionary uh, directories. So the gateclub.net is a, very, a good feature. It can automatically include all the dependencies into one zip file. So what you need to do is just uh, copy a zip file onto Hadoop HDFS, and you can run the pipeline very easily. Uh, the whole system is uh, uh, mostly distributed except uh, MetaMap. Map. So, but this can, we can do this by creating several MetaMap Map servers. Uh, because of the limitation of the resource, we haven't done this yet. And by using Hadoop and uh, MapReduce, so the whole system can be, is uh, linearly scalable. Uh, on so this is an example using the gate user interface to uh, test the annotator. So annotators, uh, so this term and synonyms will be annotated. It's uh, some ontologies we used for annotation. So, uh, indexing, we have uh, two servers uh, for to index all articles. So Solar 4 is uh, used uh, two servers each has uh, 10 solar instances running, and we'll read uh, data from the HBase cluster. So at the same time, the indexer will do grouping and ranking for annotations. Uh, sometime, for example, one article can have uh, the same term mentioned several times, so this will be uh, grouped, and uh, the terms will be ranked uh, based on uh, frequency of mentioning. So the whole time to index uh, the articles will take uh, only six hours. So there's uh, 23 million uh, PubMed, PubMed articles. Uh, to make it easier for user to use the uh, solar index, so we build a query builder. So the query builder can, can uh, convert text onto, into uh, ontology terms. So <coughs> the query will all be uh, concept based, but also support Boolean queries and uh, free text search is similar to PubMed uh, current uh, search engine. So, uh, users can also search by uh, by fields like uh, uh, inside art inside uh, titles, abstracts, or authors. And we also support other uh, concepts such as. Uh, uh, mutations, SNPs, variants. Um, the query builder is using Spring M, uh, framework, MVC framework, and the, the user interface is uh, created using JavaScript. 
uh, jQuery. So this is a screenshot of the query builder. So un user can enter a text, then the text will be searched within a, a, a ontologies available at RGD. And the users can select uh, the term from the drop-down box. On the bottom is the field search form. So users in this is a text-based. It's not uh, the text won't be converted into a uh, concept. So query expansion is automatically done. For example, in the last search, a uh, user selected on uh, cardiovascular disease, then the search will use uh, uh, term relationships that are stored in RGD main database and expand, include all the descendants. The search result uh, on the left side, it has a, a few filters. So few users can filter their search result uh, with year, organism, math, um, mutations, or disease. So th the filter result is, uh, this shows the filtering uh, result. So users can navigate uh, uh, the search result using the uh, filter path on the top. And curators can also use this to uh, retrieve uh, full text articles, but we didn't, we don't uh, store them locally, so we just use the DOI and go to the DOI uh, database to find the full text article. And if there's NCBI, uh, uh, PMC, if PMC full text article is available, we'll go, just go to PMC directly. And for each term, if you uh, mass over the term, the term mentioning will be highlighted in the, uh, in the paper. So also, if you click the, at the term, the term will, uh, our ontology report page at RGD will show. So this is an example. We use uh, this data at the, the data set as a source for data mining. So on the left side is a heat map. Uh, the y-axis is the red strings, and the, the x-axis is uh, years. So we can see the trend of using uh, red strings with uh, different years. And the second uh, heat map is a, a red string against a clinical measurement heat map. So we can see uh, for what kind of, what uh, red string have been used for what kind of uh, research work. Now I will try, uh, briefly introduce how uh, Antopub is integrated. So I don't have much time left. So this is a current framework, a current workflow. So we have uh, curators will first uh, do gene prioritization and uh, create some search queries for PubMed and uh, use the result to uh, do the to get a list of curatable PMIDs, then create a reference, then to create annotations. But using uh, Antopub, we just uh, create, construct the queries automatically, and uh, the PMIDs will be automatically imported into RGD. Oh, this part is of current design, oops, example of current uh, queries uh, created by curators. So this part, we, we add genes into curation software to and add terms. So this is a, uh, search for a term, then the term will be mapped to an RG, uh, ontology ID, then the term will be added into the bucket for annotation. Then we can use this, uh, curators can select term and the uh, uh, gene object to search in Andopub. So this is the query generated by uh, Antopub automatically. So because we uh, only annotate uh, human red and uh, uh, mouse annotations, so the search has a, a filter for uh, organisms and also expansion, the term expansion and the gene name expansion for search. So, so uh, in the user interface we have uh, can chose to 
add the reference or terms or genes back to the curation software. Uh, this is a preliminary result. We used the data set to do some data mining. So we, used the, we, we want to find out how curators make decisions, what papers is curable or not. So we used the uh, uh, current annotations as well as queries to construct a training set. So this is the result of using a binary uh, decision tree. So there's some, some future work. And uh, we do hope we, there are more components from BioNLP that uh, can are GATO or UNIMA compatible and uh, Hadoop friendly. OK, that's all. Thank you very much. Very, very wonderful talk. Um, do we have any questions? Oh, go ahead. I'm just wondering how much do you rely on, um, I notice you use a lot of applications um, like Gate and Abner and things like that. Um, what is the um, current support for these? How dependent are you on things that might not be supported as well? <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh we have currently uh, downloaded all the software, so if, uh, uh, that's why uh, we hope that we can build the models easily. So just, we can share the models because the code may not, uh, can stay there, but the models could change. If we can rebuild the models, uh, we can self-support ourselves. All the community can support this, uh, all those software. Uh, for maybe IMGI using a different algorithm for their purpose, but M, uh, RGD uses another one. So basically, currently, we are just uh, support everything by ourselves. We download them, it's just run. If it's, it's very likely the models could be out of, uh, not out of date, yeah, that's something we need to deal with in the future. So uh, I have a question too. Um, I think that, that what your situation is very interesting because you've basically put all this together yourself. Yeah. Um, from all of these online tools that are, that are well documented, that are uh, Hadoop, obviously the Apache universe is, mm -hmm. is a great place to be because they have so many good tools that, that really scale up and, and are well supported and such like. So do you have any thoughts about, um, from, from the point of view of building a community of software developers within that the leverage all of these various different excellent tools but also is kind of specialized within this community. Do you have any thoughts about um, what the strategic approach should be? You know, how should we engage one another? How should we share code? How sh are there any kind of things that, that you really need to know? I mean, I, th I think Harold's question as well is, is very well taken that, that, okay, building systems is one thing, Mm -hmm. testing them and evaluating them yeah. is another. Right. So, you know, do you have a wish list of, of stuff you need, both from the technical side and from the research of the NLP side, but also from the biologists? Is that, would you be able to talk about that? Yeah, a like, we hope that uh, uh, Bell and NLP can, like I said, always wrap the code in a certain, uh, using a certain framework in a certain uh, protocol, in a certain format, so that uh, we can uh, just uh, share the code very easily and share the data very easily. And uh, so for this room, and also building anything, so thinking about using the framework at first, that then if uh, you can customize, but uh, don't uh, get out of the framework. So otherwise, nobody can use the code or data. Great, yeah. Great. thank you.